Hello everybody, my name is Lisa and I do story time at the Main Library downtown. If you can't come to the library right now, the Columbus Metropolitan Library is determined to come to you and bring story times to you. So thanks for joining us today. But wherever you are right now, you as grown-ups can help get your kids ready for kindergarten and you as kids, amazing, smart kids, can build your brains with me today. Some of the skills that we work on in every story time is we work on our letters. There are many important letters. One of the most important letters might be the letter of your child's first name. We work on the sounds that letters make because a kid could sing the entire alphabet song and not know which letters make which sounds. We work on our, voc our rhyming. Um, and I always say when we rhyme, we often clap or pat or sing a song, oh yeah, to sound out words. And my skill for today is gonna to be working on vocabulary, adding in new words for your child, especially descriptive words, because every word you give your child is like a tool that later on in their life will help them. Later on, they're gonna read a book and they will know the word that they read because you taught it to them first. So, grown-ups and kids, I'm gonna need your help. We have a letter of the day today. Does anyone know what letter this is? That's right, it's an M. Maybe for some of you, M is a letter in your name. We look at this M, we can trace it with our fingers at home, and this M makes a sound. We could even sing about that sound. The M says M, the M says M. Every letter makes a sound, the M says M. And even now, at home, I bet there are things in your house that start with the letter M. I looked in my house and I had, kinda had to stretch for it, but let's see what I found. I wonder if you have markers. Markers start with M. If you have crayons, they might have magenta, which is a fancy word for red. This is kind of like a magenta yarn that I have today. Starts with M. I found Hey, wait a minute, soup doesn't start with M, but this soup is special. This soup is called minestrone. So if I were going on a letter hunt for the letter M, I'd find it right here. You may or may not be a soda drinker, but if you are, you might recognize an M that is in my Mountain Dew. We can practice all these different things around the house that start with the letter M and practice finding that word or that letter around your house. You could go for a letter hunt, even in your pantry, to try to find the letter M in your house. Now, what I like best about the letter M today is that it segues right into the book that we're going to share, and that book features... Does anyone recognize this animal? That's right, it's a monkey. It's a mommy monkey and her baby monkey, and this book is called Mommy Carry Me Please. You can see that big letter M right there. And this book is by Jane Cabrera. Now parents, I love Jane Cabrera's books. So many of her books have recently gone back into print and they are magic with children. They have these really bright illustrations. They've got awesome animals. We already saw the monkey. In this book, we might see other animals like a uh, crocodile. We'll have to see what this guy is. A tiger, a koala, a penguin. So let's take a look at this book, Mommy Carry Me Please. Mommy Carry Me Please. We see that letter M and this boy is in his mother's purse. Does your mom carry you around in her purse or in a grocery bag? What animal is this? That's right, it's a hippo. Mommy hippo, carry me please on your back to keep me dry. So this part is wet, but the little hippo is dry. Mommy crocodile, carry me please on your teeth just for fun. Does your mom carry you on her teeth? No. And we see our letter M in there. Look at this crocodile. Look at the patterns that she has right there. And she even has eyelashes. Mommy penguin, carry me please 
on your feet to keep you warm. Does your mom carry you on her feet? What animal is this? This is the animal we had trouble deciphering on the back of the page. This is a lemur. A lemur is a less known animal. You're not gonna walk down the streets of Columbus and see a lemur, but you'll find one in a book. Mommy lemur, carry me please. Next to your tummy, all warm and cozy. Warm and cozy. Oh, all fluffy and cozy. That word fluffy is one of those words that it helps to hold up something that's fluffy so that you know what it feels like. Mommy kangaroo, carry me please. Safe and snug inside your pouch. Now this animal is a tough one. Do you know what animal this is? Did anyone think it was a lion? Nope, it's a tiger. Lions and tigers are tricky. Kids have a hard time telling the difference between lions and tigers, and they can practice knowing the difference through books. Mommy tiger, carry me please, in your mouth to keep me safe. Does your mommy carry you in her mouth? <laughs> I hope not. Ooh, there's our letter from the front. What animal is this again? That's right. Mommy monkey, carry me please on your tail as we play in the trees. Does your mommy carry you on her tail? Ooh, this is another tough one. Does anyone know what animal this is? That's right. We might need some help from our grown-ups on this one. Mommy koala, carry me please around your neck on top of the tree. Koala is a new word. We might need to hear this new word three times in three situations to remember it because we don't always remember new words right away. Three times, three situations. <laughs> is, your, is your mom, if she's there, your grandma or even your dad afraid of spiders? Mommy spider, carry me please on your body as you weave your web. Weaving is another word that sometimes requires a physical example to know what it is. Mommy. Let's say that again together. Mommy. Carry me please. And hug me in your arms. The end. I wonder if you or your kiddo could help me describe this porcupine who's a very prickly ah, porcupine. Ah, <laughs> he's so prickly. <sighs> Time out, porcupine. <laughs> your child might even have a bear. And this bear is clearly very grumpy. Kids, do you ever feel grumpy? Sometimes they do. So those descriptive words for grumpy, like this grumpy bear, other words you can use to practice vocabulary. You can even practice vocabulary for sizes with toys. You've got a small owl, a medium sized owl, and a big owl. You've got a crinkly, crinkly toy here that makes noises. He's crinkly or crunchy. And this elephant is strangely round. So you can talk about shapes too. This shape is round like a circle. Silly elephant. Grownups, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that in the midst of all of this, you get the chance to maybe open the window, listen outside to the birds. We've got lots of free resources on our website too. We really wanna keep it current for you. So please keep checking in. Stay safe, stay well, and please keep checking in with us.